The Living Artist is supported by Filling the Well, a new podcast from Arts Midwest created to nourish, provoke, and inspire artists and art leaders. In this five-part series, hear from the creative changemakers as they share their takes on how to shift power dynamics, avoid burnout, build authentic community, share resources, and advocate for support. With each episode, you'll find links to explore these ideas further and act in your community. Listen wherever you get your podcasts or check out artsmidwest.org slash filling the well. Welcome to the Living Artist Podcast. I'm your host, Preston M. Smith. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Living Artist Podcast. I'm Preston M. Smith, at PMS Artwork Everywhere on Internet Land and Socials. I want to thank you for landing on this podcast. Whether you're a professional artist, just getting started in the art world, a collector of art, or just consider yourself a creative person, this podcast has something for you. I like to think of it as a fun way to rant and talk to other creative people about living the life of an artist, surviving and getting ahead in the art world, and enjoying your life. But most importantly, not waiting until you're dead to make it happen. All right, let's get started. All right. Saturday night by Bay City Rollers. Give it to me. Here we go. Just to be very clear, that was not supposed to be cool. (laughs) As a matter of fact, that was pretty much the antithesis of cool. But I didn't do it to be cool. I did it for memory retention purposes. Consistency. Consistency. Consistency put to music can help with your memory retention. And it just reminds me, that song reminds me of uh, Sorry I Married an Axe Murder and Mike Myers' Scottish father in that. Heed! Pants! No! We have a piper down. I repeat, a piper is down. If you haven't seen it, just go see it. Or don't. Whatever you want to do. Anyway, so consistency. We have done a podcast about consistency, but I feel like it's worth reiterating and revisiting because I get a lot of complaints. I get a lot of people saying, oh yeah, I tried this, it just didn't work. Or I I tried this marketplace and it just didn't work for me. And I tried, you know, sending stuff to galleries and I don't know, it's just not working for me or applying to grant programs and it's not working for me or, you know, you name it. I can just go on and on and on and on ad nauseum about this, but you get the picture. And I think that's very easy. I don't want to say it's a cop out. Hang on, I got a little something going on with my voice here going to take a little sip off of the old club soda. One second. Ah, that fixed it. Wouldn't that be funny? No, I'm back. I will not do any more shameless self-promotion or promoting other people's products that aren't going to pay me. I'm not going to say that I was drinking Trader Joe's sparkling water. I just wouldn't do that. That's crazy. But anyway, where were we? Back to consistency. Ah, yes. So I've been getting a lot of complaints. Not not me personally, but I've just been hearing it. It's been out there in the ether. People have been kind of lamenting their lack of success in a certain area or arena because of, oh, it just it's just not working. I've tried this. I've tried this and it's not working. You know, it just kind of goes back to all those old school people like the inventors, Edison and those guys. And, you know, I've been watching a lot of documentaries on current people like Climbing the social ladder like Anna Delvey. Like you should listen to my uh, Inventing Yourself episode. That's all about that. And my wife and I just watched the episode on Elizabeth Holmes, who was like fake it till you make it in the pharmaceutical industry. And it was just one of those things where like quitting is not in their DNA. Jail might be in their DNA, but quitting is not one of the things that are in their DNA. It's one of those things where it's just like, I 
am not successful yet because I'm not done. It's like, what's the exotic Marigold Hotel quote? It's like, all is well in the end. And if it's not well, it is not yet the end. It's kind of like that. I can't remember. I'm paraphrasing. But anyway, you get the picture. It's one of those things where you just have to keep going until you see results. Now, I'm not saying if something's completely ridiculous or it's harmful or having a negative impact on your self-esteem or your health, then obviously by all means stop doing that. But if it's something that just takes some time and it's something that you're doing anyway in your art career, like you're already trying to be an artist, you've already committed to that, you're on the life plan, you're in it for the long haul, then yeah, you've got to decide certain things that are going to be important to you, whether that's, let's just say, getting into a gallery. Let's just say you have your target set on one gallery. It's the same thing with me. I had a target a while back of getting into La Luz de Jesus, getting into a couple of their exhibitions or their group exhibitions or their coaster show exhibitions. It took me over 10 years and they had a rigorous submission process. And I was like, I thought my work was perfect for it. Like lowbrow pop surrealism. That's all I did at that time. I was just like, man, my work's perfect. I had other people telling me my work was perfect. I kept getting rejected. And I even knew somebody who had the shop next door who was hanging my work like next door in their shop. And it was like, they knew the owner and they're like, you should be getting in here. And I'm like, I know I should be. So I tried and I tried and I tried and I kept not failing, but I kept getting rejection letters or rejection emails. And I even almost gave up and I'm very persistent. And I was talking to a friend at the time and he just said, fuck him, you know, just keep submitting. And I was like, you know, you're right. And I submitted one more time and I got in and I ended up getting into two or three coaster shows and more. And uh, before I kind of switched gears and changed my, uh, my style of painting, had I given up there, it would have been a failure. It would have been a story that I was lamenting, like, oh, I just never got in there. My work was perfect for it. And they just gave me the shaft and fuck these people, you know. But it wasn't that. It was just that I needed to keep doing it. Maybe the stuff that I was submitting wasn't right thematically. You never know what's going on behind the scenes. But the point is, is I kept doing it. I kept doing it with good energy. I kept changing my approach a bit and I got in. Now, One of the best examples of this that I hear all the time, and some of it is in response to some of the stuff I say in the podcast about, you know, submitting your work to online art marketplaces like Artfinder, Saatchi, Singular, Art Majeure, you know, I can go on, Zatista, there's, there's plenty of them out there that are really good, high quality art marketplaces that I'm on, and I've sold across all these platforms. And it didn't just happen overnight. For me, it was one of those things, and I've told this story a long time ago, but it kind of bears repeating. I didn't just start submitting to these. I started with Artfinder. Okay, that was the first one. I'd been on Saatchi too, but Saatchi was just kind of a throwaway thing for me for a while. I wasn't really doing anything with it. Artfinder was the first art marketplace that I really just said, I'm going to set my sights on this and I'm going to start selling on there. I'm going to make this happen. This was back when I was waiting tables. This was back before I really even had an exit strategy to, you know, leave the restaurant business and be a full-time artist. And I just saw other people being successful on there. And I saw their work and I was like, you know, their work is good. It's very solid. I see why people are buying it. They're consistent. They're doing great stuff all the time. But I was like, my work's good too. And my work's on par with theirs. And I can see myself selling. And I just started to realize that I just need to turn it up a little bit crank up the intensity of my submission process, crank up the amount of consistency I was doing and the quality of my work, just keep submitting that. And I just decided one day, I was like, I'm going to give this a full year. Actually, I didn't say a year. I just, I expected it to take at least a year, but I was like, I'm just going to keep doing this. And I'm going to stop being so focused on results. I'm going to stop focusing on the end goal of like, I'm just going to keep doing this till I sell a painting. I just said, I'm going to keep doing this. I'm just going to keep doing it. So I started doing it every day. This was back in the time where I think I so I submitted a new piece every single day. I'm talking seven days a week, not just Monday through Friday, but seven days a week. I submitted a quality painting every single day. I did it in the morning. I put it up there. I took all the pictures, in context pictures. I did all my Photoshopping. I did all my writing of the copy of the piece, the description, all that. I put it up online. I did all the marketing. I did all the social engagement and liking other people's stuff and blah, 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 blah. I did that every single day. Before work, on weekends, just you name it, I did it. And I just kind of got into the routine of doing it to a point where I was just like, okay, this is just my routine. 
and I'm not even really thinking about what's going to happen with these things. It just kind of felt good to start doing that. Like here, I'm putting new work out there. I'm getting good response from people. Even though I haven't sold anything, people are liking it. I'm getting good feedback and I know this is going to amount to something. So I just kept doing that. And it was about a year and I wasn't even, I had no feelings involved. I had no emotions infused into this process at all. I was just going to do it come hell or high water. And one morning I woke up to a little ding on my phone and it said you'd sold a $1,600 piece to the UK on ArtFinder. And I was like, holy shit. I was like the cartoons where you rub your eyes and you look at your phone again, you know, and it's, yep, it's still there. And uh, I couldn't believe it. And my wife and I set forward into like figuring out the whole crazy shipping process to the UK at the time. This was like seven years ago, seven and a half years ago. And man, I just couldn't, I mean, I'd sold a lot of art through galleries and through my private studio, but this was the first major sale I've ever made on an online art marketplace. And I was like, it it can happen. Like this is, this is not so elusive. It almost starts to feel like when you're trying and you haven't done it, like, this is just BS. Like this, the people are just like these art marketplaces are just putting up sales that don't even exist, you know, just to kind of promote themselves. But it really works. And I started to see that and I got that done and I learned. And then it was so funny how I went from zero to one in a year. And then all of a sudden I was selling like two a month after that. It was just amazing. It was like exponential growth. And then I got to a place where I was selling like four to six a month, just on ArtFinder, mind you. And now I fluctuated um, since then, but I still am consistent on that platform. And I'm also consistent on other platforms now. And, you know, that's great. And I would have never achieved that had I just given up and been like, ah, well, didn't work for me. Better go back to waiting tables. Hell no. I was like, that's the whole reason I was waiting tables in the first place was so I could quit waiting tables to do art full time. And, you know, it was just such a great like light bulb moment. It was like, yes, this can happen and I can replicate this and I can keep doing this. And then I started growing and I really saw the light at the end of the tunnel of like, I can actually burn the boats and and jump into this full time. And I really did. I did in about six months time after that because I was being so consistent and I was saving up money and, you know, you see past episodes for more details on that. But the point is, is had I just been like eight months, okay, I'm giving this eight months and I'm done. And I would have just fallen about four months short and my whole life would be different. So I'm not saying, look, give it a year. I'm not, I don't want you to think in those terms. I don't want you to think like, okay, I need to give it six months. Or I need to give it a year. Or I need to give it three weeks, whatever you're doing in your mind. I think it's just important to make it a practice. Make this a consistent practice. Obviously work on the quality of your work. I won't put up something that I don't feel extremely excited about, that I'm not emotionally attached to, that I haven't infused with emotion and you know the present moment and stuff that I'm really jazzed about. I won't put anything like that up. I'm not in it just to put something up. But once you get to that level where you have some consistency, and maybe for you that's three times a week or four times a week, not seven days a week, that's fine. But the importance is quality and consistency over time and just doing that doing that doing that don't be so hung up on if nothing happens soon i'm done no if this is something you really want and that's the real thing that you have to decide is this something that you really want and if you really want it and you <laughs> thinking of bill Murray, and if you want it and you love it if you really decide that you want that and that it really resonates with you. And it's like, I don't care. I'm in this for the long game and I'm just going to keep doing this regardless of if I see results. That is the attitude to have. Make it a practice, make it a habit that feels good no matter what happens. And I guarantee you over time, at some point you're going to start selling. And then it's just all about replicating that after that and adjusting things from time to time as, as things evolve, as the algorithm evolves Because that's the other thing, as we've talked about the algorithm so many times in the show, you are not going to get in with the algorithm after a month or three weeks or even maybe four or five months. You know, you got to do it. You got to get that consistency out there where the algorithm is like, oh, wait, hang on a second. This person again. Okay, well, I guess we'll just, we're just going to put them at the forefront. We're going to put them out there. And that's just it. Like I said, consistency and quality over time, that will get you there. And and you can apply this to anything, really. I mean, you can apply this to diet and exercise. You can apply this to 
you know, trying to get your work into galleries, into physical brick and mortar galleries. It's the same thing. It's quality and consistency over time. And, you know, you develop a thick skin. It's like I'm saying, don't be so concerned with the results. If you're concerned so much with every single result, every time you submit to a gallery and you get that rejection letter or rejection email, or you just don't hear anything, you're going to be like, I suck. I can't do this. No, don't be worried about that. Put the blinders on. Focus on what you can control, which is your submission, your work, the quality of your work, the consistency of your work. Focus on that. Don't worry about the results. I even got to a point where I took that up a notch where I was like, if I get a rejection, I'm happy. Like this is, I'm on the right track here. Things are happening. Things are moving forward. But you know, you don't have to be like that, but you can just be like, don't worry about it. Okay, I haven't heard anything or I heard something. Next, on to the next one, on to the next, on to the next, on to the next. And I guarantee you, that will get some results. It's when you're too fragile about everything. It's when the little things knock you on your ass so much. That's when, you know, you're going to have real troubles and problems kind of getting ahead in the art world. You have to have a thick skin, like an actor. You have to have a thick skin. You have to be able to take rejection. You've got to be able to bounce back. And I think the key to that is focusing on yourself, focusing on your work, what you can create, the love for your work, the love for getting it out there. And if you focus on that and that's enough, that other stuff is going to come with the quality and the consistency. That's it. That's all I have to say. I just felt like it was worth repeating and underscoring because I've even had people on the podcast, I've even had people talk to me after listening to the podcast and go, look, you know, I tried whatever, just say mm, Sachi or Singular, whatever. I tried this marketplace and, you know, I gave it three months and it, you know, it just didn't work for me. And it's like, well, first of all, that's a very generic statement. You know, you tried it. What does that mean? Does that mean that you put up a piece every other week or you put up three pieces in one day and then you didn't put up a piece for four weeks and then you put up another couple pieces? Like that, I don't know what that means. I tried for three months and it didn't work out. I think it's one of those things where if you're being honest with yourself and you're really listening to this and you're saying, okay, I'm going to commit to three to four pieces a week on separate days. So I'm spreading these out. I'm getting this consistency. So people who go to the marketplace, they're going to see me putting up new work at least three to four times a week. They're going to see that and it's going to start to stick in their minds and in the algorithm's mind. If the, if the algorithm had a mind, maybe it does have a mind. Anyway, that's the point. And, you know, don't be so concerned with that three month cutoff time. Just keep doing it. I promise you keep doing it. You're going to get some results. And that's it. I don't want to belabor this anymore. Just wanted to touch base with this and really just kind of highlight the importance of it, uh, the, the quality and consistency. I know I preach that a lot, but it's really so important. It's so important in any field. I could be talking to a lawyer right now. I could be talking to a doctor, I could be talking to a stockbroker, whatever, you know, quality and consistency of work over time is going to get you there. So fall in love with the process, fall in love with your work, fall in love with getting it out there into the public eye and not just that dopamine hit or that quick fix of like, you know, getting the sale or, or getting the like on Instagram or whatever. If you're not focused on that aspect and you're focused on the process and enjoying the moment of it, you're going to be fine and it's all going to come. So that's all I got to say. Be good to yourself, be good to others, and I'll see you next time. Oh no, a paper is down. I repeat, we have a paper down. This has been the Living Artist Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. I just want you to know that I appreciate you being here, and I'm grateful to be in your ears. Your art and creative life on this planet is meaningful, so thank you for sharing it with me. If you like this podcast, whatever platform you're listening to it on, please subscribe and share it with your friends. You can also leave me a positive review to show your support. This helps me to reach more people with the algorithmic magic and keep the show going strong. If you want to see more of what I do and check out the art that I create, you can visit my website at www.pmsartwork.com or follow me on social media everywhere at PMS Artwork. That's it for now. See you back here next time. <laughs>